Greetings and uh, welcome, welcome to another Insight Project video. This is not, you know, this is not some sort of epical one. I'm just making a little more progress um, towards the uh, free energy, I mean the, <laughs> the pulse motor machine. We'll see what it happens, you know, when it's done. By way of background again, this is kind of the overarching theme of what we're putting together. Now I've made small refinements to pretty much all of these parts, um, but that's the overarching idea of what we're looking at. Now I'm not going to like bore you with each part like, oh I changed this a little bit, I changed that a little bit, but I will talk about some of that now. So let's start with the top of the rotor because I'm working on the rotor now. Now, first glance, this looks great, and it actually does look great. So, I also, where is it? Here it is. We've got this piece, and the reason I broke this up into two pieces is when you actually look at it on the CAD and whatnot, there's no way not to do it without an overhang unless you break it into two pieces. And this piece, even though they were both, you know, like this is one inch and this is one inch, it actually just fits when you press on it and clicks in and I don't think I'm even going to glue it um, and also here is here is our skateboard bearing and this fits beautifully there so this took maybe eight hours to print and what went wrong now while that fit perfectly there clicking in I think for one thing, with the circles, it has a little bit more difficulty than with straight lines. And for another, there's a question of whether it can, like, expand a little. And it can't, you know, because I've got it sealed in here. So I was able to get a magnet in, but I had to force that thing in. And I, I actually think I may have to just take pliers and break this thing to, to heck in order to get this magnet out that thing is in there and um so for instance i put a second magnet now these magnets are strong they've got like 50 pounds pull strength and it's it's almost a little scary to you know go a little bit higher you, you know if you've got like a hundred pound pull strength and all of a sudden your finger's there it's like oh you know it's already ow it's like you know that could be a a bad thing um, so I'm not saying that I, I may not use stronger magnets at some point but you want to be careful but that thing is in there I can't get it out you can't get a grip on it with with pliers if you put another magnet on there the other magnet pulls off before the thing comes out so you're, you're putting like 50 pounds and it's still not coming out so I removed that one and then here's the next one and what I did was I made you know, I won't say that was an eight-hour mistake. It was more like an eight-hour learning experience because sometimes when it's PLA to PLA, you can get away with that. But here I made the, the diameter instead of one inch. I made it 1.02. So if we take a magnet here, boom, it goes right in. It's even a little bit too loose, so I made it 1.05. Maybe you could get away with 1.01. Um, cause you know, it, it falls out pretty easily, but it's not rattling around or anything. And you have to think when this thing is spinning, all the forces are that way, you know, that way and that way. It, it's not, there's not forces up and down, but you know, I like it. So again, I'm not even putting, I could screw this in. I could put a screw hole in there. I could screw it in. I'm not even doing that. And I think it's in there plenty snug. It's not, well, no, it's not, it's not moving around at all. But the other one I did 1.05. And so if I had to do it again, I'd go 1.05 and see if I could get away with 1.01. .01. So as I said, you know, you can call them mistakes or you can call them learning experiences. Let's now put this in and I'll also, I'll show you an example over here but there's a second thing this actually was a mistake a stupid mistake um of what the problem was with this but i'll also show you an overhang and why i can't figure out how to get rid of that overhang um but let me see if i can put this in 
I'm not going to be able to do it with one hand, so give me a minute. So it took like two hands. That snaps right in, and that's not going anywhere. I mean, I could super glue it along there. There's, I don't see any reason to. Um, and I don't really want to, because, you know, I want to keep this thing now in multiple parts, because it's like if something goes that I've got wrong, I just want to be able to reprint one part instead of like re having to reprint a lot of parts. That worked just beautifully. Um, and see, see how smooth that is. So that's good too, without the overhang. Now we take our skateboard bearing. Hear that? Boom. Now I could glue that in. No, no, no. I'm not going to bother because the thing, I mean, I could do it and it wouldn't be a problem. But the thing is, if you get glue, super glue in there, you're, you know, you're done with this one. And depending on how much you screwed up, you got might have to reprint things too because you're trying to pry it out through super glue. So at the minimum, you'd have to reprint this part. So now let's move on to the bottom of the rotor. And I guess the first thing I'll show you is the problem when you have an overhang that, that, that is that big. You get that. And in a moment, we'll, we'll put something in there. But I mean, if you have like too much PLA out there, you don't want your bearing like half sideways. That's going to be terrible. This trick again here where you broke it up into two parts to get rid of that overhang. But when you actually when you actually look about look at it and think about it, if you carve that out there, what you end up with is now boom, 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 boom. Those are going to be overhangs because you have this here. You can't you can't do that. And and so I can't figure out a way to get rid of that overhang. So what I did is instead of making that like a quarter inch, I realized you just need something to keep the bearing there. So I made it like a an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch, just something to stop the bearing from going in and keeping it level. One thing that worked really well. This you got that you got that little groove there. You got that little nubbin or whatever you call it there and so i'll show you this thing only fits on in one direction and you see because of that groove and the and the place where it has to go in everything's lined up perfectly so what did i screw up here and yeah i mean there was this i could have lived with that i mean i could have just you know, taking a screwdriver and, you know, gotten it. So here was what happened, is I put this in. I mean, you can't really see it here. <laughs> Maybe you can. But I was looking at it. It's like I was shooting for 3 8 inch air gaps. It's like, no, that's not 3 8 inch. This is all wrong. What what the heck happened? So I'll tell you what happened. Is I, I knew from memory this was 2 inch by 2 inch, and I just thought this was 2 inch because it looks like a block. It's not. It's 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 and a half inch. So I added a quarter inch to each air gap. Now I'm going to keep this thing because what this means is that's, that's one where you're going to go, I have, I have it set for a 3 8 inch air gap, and then if I use this one, it would be a 5 8 inch air gap, which I think is too big. And 3 8 might be too big, but I think that's a reasonable reasonable place to, to start. I think that's probably about right. So that was dumb. But that then brings us to here. And so oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heat the bed. I don't want that thing getting warped or anything like that. Um, so now we've got this one. This one's the correct, it's a half inch shorter. Okay, so now if you can see them there, we've got one that's the correct height now. So let me make sure that this fits on there. It does. So now we've got this and we've got this 
and with the shelves we're going to have 3 8 inch air gaps between the magnets. Now if we spin it over here you see it's still a mess but it's good enough because all you really need to do is make sure that your second bearing there is flat so I, I don't see that as as being a big issue it's not I mean you just need something flat and I don't know why like sometimes you can get away with a lot of overhangs but I think when you have an overhang with a circle apparently it's it, it doesn't like that and it doesn't do well with that but it's good enough and if not I'll you know I'll sand it and make sure that it that it's set so what what remains to be done okay the top plate and the shelf for the magnets look good. It took me a while to get those. Um, now, one area where I broke down and said, no, I'm not going to 3D print that. Now, maybe I can show it. Is um, like here is just one of the supports there. And see that? So, if you have your axle made of that, that could be bad. <laughs> Because your axle is actually going to be something that, as this spins with whatever imbalances there may be, there'll, there'll be forces on the on this here, and it could either warp or it could snap. And if you were spinning this thing at like 2,000 RPMs and snapped, it, you know, some sort of like five-inch magnetic shuriken coming at you or something, so that would not be good. Um, so what I did is I broke down and just ordered some 8, eight, eight millimeter diameter. This is um, steel. It might be stainless steel, but it's magnetic. This is um, steel, and then I also ordered a copper rod. It would have been nice. I should have looked and seen if I could get some ones that are hollow, because this is kind of overkill. I mean, that, that thing's not going to bend or break. But what... I'm proud now again it's magnetic but I've put it next to the magnets it's not going to be a some of the motor designs it's a big issue this one I don't think it will be and let's see here well now it's not it pretty much fits with the stainless steel it doesn't quite fit with the copper so I'd have to sand or file the copper down now the copper would be non-magnetic so uh, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue but at some point I may try it and the other thing is the copper sort of the wrong length but I could take a Dremel and cut it and this I mean you can see there I just put that in there this is going to be you know there'll be a little bit sticking up but it's about the right length um, for what you're gonna want here so I, I've just you know, I mean, I've stuck in the piece there, and, uh, you know, I could almost get away with not reprinting this piece and just reprinting the supports here so that it matches this. But I think I'm going to reprint one more big part once more because, you know, I'd need to put some tape somewhere to keep this there, and I want to actually have it as PLA. So there's that. The second thing is I want more support out here. The third thing is I don't think this carving things out was a good idea after all because it ends up slowing things down because it can't, you know, it has to print all this angle and it can't just so it's not really any faster yeah you save some PLA you know I mean I've saved 50 cents of PLA there wow but it's also weaker so I'll reprint this as a flat board I'm gonna keep it an eighth of uh, I mean a quarter of an inch I'm gonna put a little extra buttressing on these and especially on this one where this goes in now when I really uh, finish putting this together, I'll show you what parts I'm like happy to glue in. Like I have no problem gluing this in. But what I want to make sure is that if possible, and I think it will be possible, you want to be able to flip your rotor out. Because I mean, I'll tell you, I'm already, I've already 
on Tinkercad, I've done the, the six magnet merge and, and I've been experimenting with, you know, like what would I do with the serpentine coil with a, a different kind of setup. And I uh, was thinking, uh, I won't go into it all, but I've got another rotor. That will actually maybe be the first, you know, Mark 1A. But first thing is, you know, can I get the Mark 1 assembled and then does it actually spin? So what I'll say is I'm going to quiet down now. This will be the last big part. This is probably another eight hour print. And then I have to reprint these to um, get them correct for the air gap for the shelves for this because they're not correct right now. And then I have to reprint these because this was just, I mean, this was a previous printer. Uh, I need to, I need to do that better and more precisely. And then it's done. So back to work. Talk to you in a minute. It'll maybe be like a day or two or three, but you get, you know, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Bye for now.